Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. We're so glad that you're here worshiping with us. Special welcome to all, all visitors and guests that are with us. And uh, it's a beautiful day out there. And so uh, I wish it was like this year round. This is like the perfect temperature. So enjoy the beautiful day. This is wonderful. And um, thank you for the to the Brendel and uh, Eshelman family for the nice flowers on the altar this morning. We appreciate that. In memory of uh, remember your parents. Um, we recently had our synod assembly. Um, our synod is a group of about 310 Lutheran congregations in our area, York, Lancaster, Harrisburg kind of area. And um, it, it's called the Lower Susquehanna Synod. And so this year, uh, our synod assembly was held virtually and um, myself and Will Wood from our congregation were delegates to it. So I invited Will Wood this morning to come forward and give us a, an update on the recent Synod Assembly. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, as Pastor mentioned, we were the delegates from our church to the Synod. Um, it was head, held virtually, Zoom meetings, and um, uh, that was how it was done. Bishop James Dunlop gave the opening remarks addressing the decline in membership, attendance, and giving across our synod and the denomination. He urged congregations to think creatively, especially in the area of social ministry. We elected Jennifer Lau of York as the Synod Vice President, who is the chairperson of the Synod Council, and re-elected Joseph Stepanski as the Synod Treasurer. We passed many amendments to the Constitution and the bylaws. We elected many people to the Synod committees and elected many others to represent our Synod at the upcoming ELCA National Assembly in August of 2022 in Cleveland or Columbus, Ohio. Um, it was really great to see how many people are willing to put their gifts forward and, and work hard to keep the Synod and all our congregations uh, on track. And there was a lot of work that they put into doing this Zoom meeting. They had us voting online using our telephones, our you know, cell phones. It was, they really did a great job. Thank you. Thank you all for being our delegate and also for that report this morning. It's our time now to uh, say hi to each other. So turn around, wave, say hello to everybody, welcome each other. Hello, people following the line at home. Good morning, good morning. I hope everyone's having a great day. Let's begin with our prelude. Thank you. 
Our psalm will be read responsively this morning. The words are printed in your bulletin, or if you're following online, you can also access the bulletin online through our website. Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, on the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp, for you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no injustice. And let us pray. O oh Lord, you have planted your grace within us as a seed. We pray that your love may nourish and grow in us, that it may spread forth and bear fruit to others, that we may spread your kingdom of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first Bible reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body whether good or evil. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We, now, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please rise if you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he comes in with the sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, when sown upon the ground, it's the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. 
With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. And kids, it's time now for the children's message. So welcome to everybody who's following online. And a special welcome back to Asia from, from uh, Milton Hershey School. So we are so glad to see you this morning, too. This is great. We missed you. So children's message. I brought with me a plant this morning. This one I'm growing in my, in my back deck here. And Asia, do you know what this is? Yeah, it's, it, it's dill, you're right. It's, it's a dill plant and started out from, from, a, from a seed and the dill seeds are like so tiny and it grows into this big long thing. We even actually harvested the top of it. That's how much it just keeps on growing and growing. So if you guys, do you guys have any dill plants? No, well, this is what, what dill looks like. And it kind of reminded me of Jesus's parable where Jesus talked about, um, a mustard seed. Mustard seed, again, is a really small. It can grow into this big kind of bush. And Jesus said, that's how it is with the love of God. When God gives you love, it starts off something like really small in your life, but that little bit of love can keep growing and growing and get bigger and bigger. And pretty soon you can start spreading love to others. So hopefully you've been able to find that out where you are, Asia, that you can grow the love of God and spread it to other people and they can experience what God's is. And, and kids following at home, you know, think about how ways that you can maybe spread the love of God in a small way, but like a seed, that small way can get bigger and bigger and bigger until the love of God spreads far and wide. So thank you very much. It's always fun to have a little show and tell. This congregation, like many others, was started by farmers. Much has changed in the past 290 years, including the fact that we count only a few farmers among our membership today. But what has not changed is that the good news of Jesus Christ still comes to us like a seed of grace planted in our lives. While most of us are not farmers, many of us may have vegetable gardens or flower gardens. In my case, as I mentioned, our back deck is lined with pots where we grow lettuce and spinach and tomatoes and flowers and, and herbs such as basil and parsley, chives, cilantro, mint, and of course that dill plant that I brought. And somehow watching these plants grow always fills me with a sense of awe. I don't know if it does that for you, but it does that for me. I marvel at how a seed or a young seedling simply stuck in the soil will grow all by itself. And very quickly, it seems, these seeds or seedlings grow into these large, leafy and beautiful plants. All I have to do is add water. And when it rains, I don't even have to do that. Nearly all the growth happens without me doing much at all. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus compares the kingdom of God to seeds. Jesus says that after a person sows seeds, they go to sleep every night and go to sleep every night and rise every morning. And he tells a story in this parable of how the seeds sprout and grow all by themselves. And the person in the parable simply marvels at it. This parable of Jesus is really a story about grace. Just as the person who sowed the seed is passive, they don't really do a whole lot, they just watch it in awe as this gift grows before their eyes. So too it is with God and us. Our lives are filled with gifts that God gives us, whether we deserve it or not whether or not we do anything to make them happen. 
God gives us gifts freely. That's grace. And this example of seeds helps us understand the grace of God. Grace is anything given to us by God in which God does all the work, and we are just thankful recipients of God's goodness. Grace doesn't depend upon us. Just like the life power contained within each seed doesn't depend upon us either. Grace is indeed a gift from God. Jesus says that this graciousness is at the heart of the kingdom of God. God's kingdom, God's realm of love, spreads throughout this earth through the Holy Spirit. Not really by what we do, but by what God does. In a sense, God's kingdom is like a seed that is scattered amongst humanity. We all have this message of God's love planted in us and around us. And we can watch this love grow and spread in this world. And it's all done by grace. Just like a seed is small, but can grow into something very big, says Jesus, so too many times the kingdom of God starts off in small ways, in, in, in little acts of love. And then it grows into something much bigger in our lives and in this world. Jesus, in fact, compares the kingdom of God to a tiny mustard seed, which starts out really, really small, but that soon grows into a bush so big, he says, that birds of the air can sit in it and make nests in it. These parables of Jesus make us think. As we listen to them, we begin to ask ourselves, what seeds has God planted in us? Where is there a little bit of love, a little bit of goodness that has been given to you by God, like a gracious seed planted in your life? And how amazing is it that these little bits of love and goodness from God can take root and grow in your life until they blossom and they bear fruit. That's the way God's love works. Some small act of love received in the soil of our spirits can germinate, grow, and spread, and then be expressed in large ways in this world. How is that happening with you? How are you expressing the love of God that has been planted in you? Are you doing acts of love to help further the spread of the kingdom of God? Because that's what love is designed to do. And these parables remind us of that. Love is designed to spread like a seed planted in the lives of others, which then can grow and turn in their lives and be spread from them. And so the kingdom of God in this manner is shared throughout all humanity in the world. It changes us. It changes others. And it changes our world for the better. That's what the kingdom of God is. Our other Bible lesson from 2 Corinthians says that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. This idea of a new creation sounds an awful lot like a plant growing from a seed, a new creation sprouting up whenever anyone is in Christ. In this action of God's action of this new creation, there's this idea of transformation, of growth, of change happening. The kingdom of God, the love of God, is designed to change us for the better, to transform us. Think of yourself then as a new creation. Think of yourself as growing and changing and transforming. Because through Christ, that's what you are. You are a new creation. God has planted a little bit of the spirit of the risen Jesus in you, in your soul, in your life in order that it may grow and transform you into a loving, spirit-filled person. 
and that you may bear fruit to others. I know a lot of people that confer the grace of God upon me, planting a bit of God's graciousness in my life so that I might be a little bit more gracious to others. I had the privilege of knowing a person who was a member of a church that I once served. And whenever anyone in the church would say something perhaps a little bit unkind, and someone else would mention it later on, he would invariably say, well, maybe that person was just having a bad day. And these words would always plant a little bit of graciousness in my soul to make me look at people with perhaps a little more understanding, maybe with a little bit more compassion. Maybe they were having a bad day. I have another person close to me who helps me not to judge others, pointing out with kindness, but pointing out nonetheless, that sometimes the very things that I judge in others are things that I do myself. And so maybe I should be a little bit more understanding of that person's behavior. The gift that I receive from them then is that I can have a little bit more humility and perhaps a little less judgment, have a little more grace as I deal with other people. These words of graciousness are the seeds by which the kingdom of God spreads in this world. So who is it in your life that spreads graciousness to your soul? Who helps you be a little more compassionate, a little more understanding, a little less judgmental toward other people? Who plants seeds of love in you that germinate and grow and make you want to spread graciousness yourself? Who helps God transform your heart to make you a better person, to help make you part of God's new creation? I recently read a couple of stories of people spreading kindness even to strangers, random acts of kindness, sharing the seeds of God's grace with them. And even though the stories, or these are both stories about random acts of kindness, you can do kindness to anyone. It doesn't have to be a stranger, and it doesn't have to be random. It could be intentional. You can give grace to your closest family members and friends. You can plan ahead and try to think of do something nice for somebody to give them a little bit of love. But these stories are about random acts of kindness. I wanted to share them with you. The first true story was about a woman in New York City who after a long and exhausting day of work got off the subway and stopped at a convenience store on her way home. It had been a long day, she was tired, so she got herself a bag of popcorn to treat herself. And she stood in line behind a man at the counter buying a pack of cigarettes. As the man was paying for his purchase, he turned and noticed the woman and said, oh, you look like you've had a long day. He then turned back to the cashier and said that he would pay for her snack too. The woman politely declined and was already pulling out her wallet. But the man said, no, really, I'll, I'll get it. He handed the cashier a couple of extra dollars to cover her popcorn and told her that he hoped that her night got better. As he walked out the store, said goodbye, and she never saw him again. But she always remembered that act of graciousness, that act of kindness, and it made her want to be kind toward others in return. A similar story is told about a woman at a supermarket who discovered that she was $12 short when she went to go pay for her groceries at the cashier. As the woman began to remove items out of her bag, the woman behind her pulled out a $20 bill and gave it to her. Oh no, don't put yourself out, said the woman. But the woman replied, but I, I just want to let you know why I'm doing this. You see, my mother is in the hospital right now with cancer. And every day I visit her and I bring her flowers. And today she told me that instead of bringing her flowers every day, she would love it if I would go out every day and do something nice for someone, some act of love for people who might need it. So here, she said, handing her the 20, 
Please accept my mother's flowers. Graciousness given to us, whether it's from strangers or friends or close family members, is like planting a seed of goodness in us. And the point of this, the point of the kingdom of God, is so that it should grow and bear fruit. So that when we give graciousness to others, we plant a seed of goodness in them as well. Today and every day this week, I urge you to be attentive to the seeds of grace that come your way. Notice them. Take them in. Let them affect you. Allow them to transform you and make you perhaps a little more loving toward others, a little more gracious to someone else. And then look for opportunities to spread that same grace of God to strangers, to friends, to families, to close associates. Because the kingdom of God is like a seed of grace. Amen. And the hymn that we'll listen to is on what has now been sown. The words are printed in your bulletin, and starting in July, we're going to start to be able to sing. But for now, you can hum this along on what has now been sown. The Apostles' Creed is found printed in your bulletin. Let us stand as together we profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the seeds of grace that you plant in our lives. Help us to be attentive and appreciative of them and empower us in turn to give grace to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, we pray for the needs of our world. We pray for the world leaders gathered together this week, that they may find ways to help and improve our world. We pray for all in this world who are poor and needy, those who are hungry and malnourished, those who are homeless and struggling. We pray for those caught up in war and violence 
and we continue to pray for peace in Palestine and Israel. We also pray for our planet, that we may find constructive ways to combat pollution and global warming. May the seeds of your kingdom bear the fruit of compassion and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day and for the gifts that you give us. Thank you for home and food, for friends and family. Thank you for the gifts of nature and enjoyment. Let us never take your grace for granted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and mercy, shower your compassion upon all who are struggling with physical ailments, who are hospitalized or recovering, who are dealing with illnesses and health issues. We also continue to pray for all in our community, nation and world who are devastated by the effects of the coronavirus. Additionally, we pray for all who are in grief or mourning and all who are carrying burdens in their hearts or in their lives. Especially we pray for, and please repeat their names, Lesya Angst, Lesya. Dorothy Beam, Dorothy. Nancy and Russell Beck, Nancy. Eric Bentz, B. Ebersole, Sharon and Cindy Frankhauser, Eugene and Hazel Fry, Nick Gaiman, Alex Harding, Margaret Kuhlman, Tina Lavernchuk, Nolan Lead, Michael Martin family, Katie McGallacher, Mary Miller, Charles Moyer, Jean Moyer, Roma Oberholzer, Betty Ramsey, Larry Ramsey, Ella Sensenig, Lucy Snader, Becky Thunberg, Jean Wolf and all others who name before you now, either silently or loud. In your tremendous grace, come to them, bind up their wounds of body or spirit, comfort them and bring them to wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. You're welcome to stay and talk to each other. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.